For many years, Greg Bennett was best known as the man who educated the three-time Melbourne Cup winner Maccabi Diva. But this year, he's achieved another rare feat, breaking in the winners of the Golden Slipper, the Blue Diamond and the Magic Millions two-year-old classic. It's my pleasure to welcome Nathan Exelby to Bread to Win as we look at the role of the breaker in educating our beautiful thoroughbreds for the racetrack. and wins. And Jacques Perrault from the million. This is Fenwick Farm in South East Queensland, where renowned horsebreaker Greg Bennett and his team broke in the winners of this year's Magic Millions, Blue Diamond and Golden Slipper. We caught up with Greg to find a little bit more about the farm and how his process works. Greg, obviously your name's the one been in, in limelights with what's happened this year, but there's a lot of people involved in the, in the breaking process. Oh, absolutely, Nathan. It's not just a one-man show. And I mean, I try to divert as much as that to my staff and my help as possible because they're the unsung heroes. Um, there's always got to be a face, you know, a leader, a team leader, a captain, whatever. And I guess that's befallen on me because I've been in the game a long time, 40 plus years. Um, and been from one end to the other. And, and since being in Queensland, we've set up this pre-training and breaking in setup because I felt that it was needed up here um, to help all the other people involved because the industry is growing so much, there's a lot of horses. So finding the right staff and getting them to work around the animals the way you want them to do it is difficult. But I've got a really good team here and, and you know, I've got ex-jockeys and ex-trainers and, and guys that have wanted to learn how to break in and and, and they're good because I'm getting a bit of a clean canvas and I can show them how I want it done um, because it's got to be done my way because that's where the buck stops, you know. Yeah. I'm in the limelight, sure, but if there's a problem, it's me that cops it, not them. How often do you get it right as a breaker in predicting whether a horse is going to make it or not? Probably 50% of the time, but out of that 50%, there's probably only 2 or 3% that get to group one, group two, group that black type, senior black type level. And obviously the horses that we've spoken about this year, starting with Shakiro, through to Artorias and then stay inside, what sort of a market did you give them when they left the farm? Oh look, they were all rated up very highly um, and we don't hand out superlatives because it's, they can come back and you know haunt you. Using my experience from years gone by and having passed very, very good horses, you've got a guide, you've got a judge, you've got a, a template you can judge them on. And, you know, when I start comparing horses with Typhoon Tracy and, and Maccabi Diva and Written Tycoon and, and uh, All Silent, you know, those sort of horses, which were all very, very great, very good race horses. Ha Ha won a Golden Slipper. Zephyr's won a Magic Million. So I've had horses of that calibre in the past. I use them as a template to judge these ones. Those three colts and Toby's colt that ran second um, in the Magic Millions, rated up there in the... Very rarely hand out 10, but you know, eight and a half to nine, okay. without a doubt. What sort of personal satisfaction do you get out of seeing what they then go on and achieve on the racetrack? I get as big a thrill out of that as I used to training racehorses to win myself. Someone asked me that question the other day and I said, achieving that goal this year with those three Colts all individually, it rates up there with Maccabi Diva winning a third Melbourne Cup and clearly Innocent winning the Doom and you know, the, the group one up here after I'd handed him over to Chris Lees. I mean, it's emotional, it's, it's good horses will make a grown man cry, that's without a doubt. So you've been breaking in yearlings this year since pretty much the Magic Millions finished in January. Yep. Is there any there that have stood out from the crowd yet? Well, there's been a few that stand out, um, but nothing that we've really rated highly yet. There's some very nice horses, Colts and Phillies. We've done probably 100 since the end of January. So out of that 100, there's probably about 10%, seven or eight to 10 horses out of that 100 that have given us a bit of a ooh, wow feeling. But I'll know more on them when they come back through in a month's time after they've been spelled because they mature, they grow a bit, they get stronger. After they've been broken in, they've used muscles that they have never used. They've let down a little bit. They come back a bit stronger and a little bit more knowledgeable. We can ask them a little bit more and that's when we get, you know, we can then say, OK, this one's a nine, this one's an eight, this one's a four. There's plenty of fours and threes, don't worry about that, mm -hmm. unfortunately for those owners. But they can still win a race somewhere at that, at that level. 17,000 foals born every year and only 16 line up in the Magic Millions. Mm -hmm. Same with the Golden Slipper. 
So it's a very small percentage that get there. Again, we, we, we're guarded in our accolades with horses because it can come back to haunt you. But you know, I'm not afraid to tell people that their horse I think is very, very good. But I've also got to be honest with the people and say, look, you know, he's a nice horse, but you know, he's probably going to be a three or four year old. He's not going to get up and run early or he's this or he's that. Um, and there's differences. People are happy to be told they've got a horse that can maybe possibly win a cox plate as a four year old, not a magic millions as a two year old. So sales time, obviously we've got trainers giving us horses from Victoria and New South Wales. They like to buy them and leave them here and let them chill out up here, get broken in, furnish and then go south. Once they're down there, then they're obviously they're in their system. But then we get a lot coming back uh, to winter up here because it's warmer um, and also with the winter carnival in mind as well. You know, Brisbane run a great carnival in the winter time and, and horses are attracted to come up here. We get quite a few come a bit early just to have a bit of a freshen up here, back into a bit of work and then get finished off to race in, in the Brisbane Winter Carnival. It's an ideal set property for what we want to do and how we want to service the industry.